Hello, this uh, video is the final installment on the uh, dynamics of circular motion, the circular motion as a whole. Now, in this video, we are going to discuss about uh, the uh, the bending of the cyclist as well as uh, the vertical circle looping the loop. Now, in the previous video, we had discussed about the uh, banking of roads and uh, how a vehicle especially uh, four wheelers or three wheelers uh, four wheelers so as to say they uh, move with a considerable speed and uh, that needs to be balanced such that the vehicle does not uh, get off the track uh, or skid along the road and that is why the roads are banked where one of the uh, where one of the edges the especially the outer edge is kept a bit higher than the inner edge but in case of two wheelers such as cycles or even bikes uh, they can balance themselves by bending over with respect to the vertical uh, suppose we have a bicycle over here and uh, we'll try and draw it uh, in a in a better way for you now this is the tire which obviously when you look at it front on it's it looks like this it doesn't look circular this is the guard over the the mud guard over the tire of the bicycle and uh, then you have this and the handle more or less a bicycle looked uh, looked uh, with a front view and obviously there's a cyclist a cyclist over here I'm not concerned about the cyclist. Obviously, there's a cyclist uh, riding it. So, we need not be concerned about that. But here, uh, it is bending over, right? It is bending over from the, uh, with respect to the vertical. So, this probably is the angle with which it is bending with respect to the vertical. the angle being supposedly theta over here right and uh, the bending occurs uh, as it moves along the curve so the curve probably is along this direction like this the road is bending along this direction right and the bicycle the cyclist obviously bends uh, in that way so as to balance himself the radius of the road is obviously along that line with respect to a certain center and uh, the cycle must be getting a reaction force and the reaction force is the normal reaction force with respect to the uh, with respect to the uh, center of mass of the cycle as it is bent over by an angle theta here it will have two components one of the components being r sine theta because the theta is over here so this is r cos theta and that will be balanced by the weight of the uh, the person and the cycle and uh, this however will contribute to the centripetal force because that is acting towards the center so you have r sine theta to be contributing to the centripetal force let the person be cycling uh, with a speed v so v square and the mass combined is m divided by the radius in this case as i mentioned is simply r and uh, that 
is the uh, centripetal force and then you have the r cos theta that is the cosine component of the reaction force that being balanced by mg now if that isn't balanced then it may so happen that the person the cycle especially bikes which move with a considerable speed uh, they may get lifted along the road uh, okay so the balance is lost in that case now taking the ratio of both the sides uh, of the of both the equations what we get is a value of tan theta and uh, the m's get cancelled out what you are left with is v square by rg uh, which is exactly the uh, the equation that we obtained for uh, optimum speed in case of uh, banked roads now here what we get is that according to v according to v the value of theta can be adjusted because here the vehicle can bend here the bicycle or the bike so as to say that can bend according accordingly uh, so as to adjust themselves uh, with respect to a given speed with which they are moving and uh, accordingly the cosine and the sine components uh, balance as well so the greater the value of v that means the greater the speed the greater is this value of uh, bending with respect to the vertical and that is why you see bike uh, bikers the motor bike racing uh, tracks uh, the bikers in those tracks they use uh, they are they have padded knees so that uh, they do not get injured while bending considerably uh, along that curved road so obviously the radius uh, cannot change and th this factor in the denominator that cannot change so as v increases what increases is theta because tan uh, the value of tan increases with the increase in uh, angle and so this equation best describes such a type of motion then we move over to our next part probably the final part in this uh, uh, video and in this series of circular motion that is a uh, motion of an object along a vertical circle the vertical circle that means you are looping a loop that means any object which is tied to a certain string and with respect to that it is supposedly uh, world in a vertical sense like this such that it completes a circular path that's more or less a circular path and uh, let me mark a few points over here uh, this string with which that object is being uh, whirled that string let it be having a certain length and the length is supposedly L or let us take it as R in this case because r will be helpful in taking as the radius so that length is simply the radius of the circular path that is r and at any given instant of time the object let it be over here and it is having a weight which is acting downward and the angle to which it is swept through let it be theta at that instant of time it is uh, raised through a height from the bottommost point from let this point be a let this point be b and from that bottommost point a to the point b let it be raised through a height say h 
so let me just mark a few points for you this is O that is the center this is A this is B and let this be uh, th th we will have another point here and the point here this is the point C and let this be the point D we'll come to the point T which is the topmost point uh, later on but now for now it was supposedly having a speed or a velocity so as to say v naught in the at the bottommost point and then the velocity changed and the velocity changed to a value of v1 let us say at uh, the point b the at the point b again because this is theta the angle over there then you will be having a component of its weight which will be acting along this line that is mg cos theta mg cos theta is the component of the weight which is acting away from the uh, center and along the uh, string there will be a tension uh, such that it remains uh, it remains intact and these are the conditions that we have as of now now with these conditions available what we can do is we can just obtain a relation because it has a, it has been uh, lifted through a height h against the gravitational force then uh, the acceleration which is acting in the downward direction that has probably reduced its velocity the final velocity that we are getting at the point b is uh, v1 so v1 squared is equal to the initial velocity squared remember v squared is equal to u squared plus 2 a s so this is v squared the final velocity instead of v squared we have v1 instead of u we have v naught which is the initial velocity at the point a 2 because it is going against the gravitational pull so this is minus g times of the distance here being h because the height through which it is raised is h now remember we are not considering the vector case because this is square of those vector terms so you might get confused that i initially i had uh, denoted them as velocity but now i am saying that i am taking the square of them so we need not consider the vector because uh, it's a dot product of the vectors now v1 square is equal to v0 square plus uh, of 2 plus 2 of minus g times of h with this again uh, let us consider the the forces that are involved at the point b now t is acting towards the center and mg cos theta is acting away from the center but as we know that the centripetal force which acts towards the center as a whole so we can say that t is greater in this case so t minus mg cos theta will contribute to the centripetal force at that point that being m v1 squared divided by uh, the radius in that case is uh, simply r because r is the chosen length in this case uh, then we can just substitute a few values over here so t minus mg now considering the triangle that we have over here that is triangle ocb ocb this triangle we have a value of cos theta and in that case the value of cos theta being base divided by hypotenuse the base here is oc and oc is simply equal to r minus h if you observe it correctly because r being the total length total radius or the total length of the uh, string which is uh, whirling that uh, that uh, mass m so r minus h because h is the length through which it has been raised up so r minus h is the base and the hypotenuse here is also r because this that is the length of the string so r minus h divided by r gives the value of cos theta and that is equal to m divided by r v1 squared so instead of v1 squared we may use this value that we have with us that is uh, instead of v1 squared we have v naught squared 
plus I can write it directly now minus of 2 G H again let's just rearrange and uh, have a value of this tension that we have over here so M by R this this M and divided by R that can be taken as common as it goes to the other side so M by R is taken common entirely what we are left with is that uh, from this term over here on the right hand side we still have V naught square minus of 2 G H and from this term that we had taken to the right hand side that becomes positive and M by R is positive in that case so all that remains is the uh, is the acceleration due to gravity multiplied with R minus H so now what we have with us is an expression for tension and we can use this generalized equation for tension by uh, putting the values of the height at different points so at point A which is the bottommost point let the tension be T1 the tension along the string be T1 and uh, because it is the bottommost point obviously what is the value of H over there now H is equal to 0 in that case so we have T1 to be equal to M by R and uh, that is V0 square is there H goes to 0 so the second term goes to 0 and what we are left with is uh, plus GR this is the value of T1 again uh, let's consider the topmost point that is at the point D at point D let's have the tension to be equal to T2 and uh, T2 at that point obviously at the point D H is equal to twice the radius because it is the diameter diameter now so this is 2 R so now we have T2 to be equal to M by R and that will be multiplied with this whole lot of things that are there V naught squared minus 2G instead of H we have 2R and plus G R minus of 2R then finally we have T2 to be equal to let me just give it a proper value M by R V naught square this is a minus 4 G R and if you look at it this is uh, just minus R remains there so minus G R so this is V naught squared minus 5 G R that is the value of tension at the topmost point now in order that this string doesn't really slacken and the motion continues the loop is uh, completed the string is the, the mass m that is provided over there that completes this motion right from the bottommost point it climbs up and it reaches this point and at this point such that the motion is intact uh, this rope or the string that uh, with which the given mass is tied to that must not slacken if it does that means uh, this this mass has taken over and it's obviously going down from this point so that should not be the case what should be the case is that this string let me draw it in another ink for you uh, what must be the case is that this string must remain straight and in order that the string remains straight completely this tension T2 which is along that string that must not be zero but we obviously require a certain minimum condition the most minimum condition which will be 
helpful uh, to continue the motion so we we cannot take it to zero and obviously uh, the tension must exist to some extent so what we do is mathematically we just uh, do a bit of a manipulation there that we take t2 to tend to zero even if it's not equal to zero now if you remember t2 had the value of uh, m by r v naught squared minus 5 gr and uh, with that uh, t2 tending to 0 obviously these terms cannot be 0 they are not equal to 0 right so all that we have is this term that can go to 0 because there is a minus sign over there and so we can take this value to tend to 0 which gives us v naught to have at least a value of or v naught squared to have at least a value of root over of uh, of 5 gr and that gives me v naught to be equal to root over of 5 gr so this v naught if you remember is the is the uh, velocity that it possessed at the bottom most point over here and uh, that v naught such that this motion continues uh, till the up uh, until this point d that we had taken such that the motion the loop is uh, completed this uh, must be the velocity which will help it to rise through this height up to this point and at this point the rope or the string must not slacken and in order that happens this is the minimum condition now with this minimum condition available to us what we can really obtain is the tension that the uh, string must withstand the minimum tension because this is the minimum condition minimum condition so this minimum condition will lead us to another minimum condition that is the minimum tension that the string must withstand at the bottommost point and the tension at the bottommost point if you remember is t1 and that is equal to uh, v uh, m by r v0 squared plus gr m by r v0 squared plus gr and because we have obtained v0 or v0 squared in this case is simply the square of root over 5 gr that is 5 gr plus gr that gives me 6 gr so m by r times of 6 gr the r get can get cancelled out so we have 6 mg so this is the tension that the string must withstand must be able to withstand or hold at the bottommost point that is the 6 times the weight of the object that is tied to it so if the string is able to withstand this amount of weight then it can be capable it's not about just withstanding it's about possessing that tension it can be more than that uh, the tension at the bottommost point but here we have the minimum tension now this will enable the string to remain tight and uh, the, the the object to move up to the point D but that's not all at the point D the it, it, it must not stop at the point D it has to complete the loop so at the point D it must possess a certain speed that that speed be V2 or the velocity in, in this case so that velocity will enable it to complete this loop and come back to this point and in that case this entire loop is is, is uh, completed so V2 uh, is the minimum speed at the topmost point D so that this object completes the loop so what must be the minimum speed so in order to determine that we just use the equation of motion that is v2 squared is equal to initial speed u squared minus 2 g h h here because it is uh, obviously rising from this height to that and this entire length if you remember is the diameter 2 r so this is 2 r 
so v naught squared uh, as we have the value that is uh, v 5gr minus this is 4 times of gr so all you have is gr so v2 is the minimum speed that the which is obviously now root over of gr this is the minimum speed or velocity that the object must possess such that that uh, such that the loop is completed along that vertical circle so these are some of the conditions here we have three conditions the velocity at the topmost point the tension that the, uh, at the bottommost point as well as uh, in the previous page that we obtained the velocity uh, or we obtained over it over here that is the velocity uh, that it must possess this is the third condition this is the first actually this is the first this is the second one that we obtain and this is the third case that we obtain so these are the conditions some of the conditions that minimum conditions that the uh, motion must possess uh, or must uh, be carried out so that this loop is completed along that vertical line that was all for the, uh, the for the circular motion part uh, we'll be uh, discussing some of these things uh, in the rotational frame as well in the system of particles uh, especially uh, the equations that are involved uh, for the angular motion uh, remember uh, we had a cert uh, certain set of equations of motion for uh, the linear case that is uh, v square like over here that i have used v square is equal to u square plus 2 a s now similarly we have the uh, equation v is equal to u plus a t and s is equal to u t plus half a t squared and uh, finally the s nth that is equal to uh, u plus a by 2 whole multiplied with 2 and minus 1 this was in the linear case but in the angular case we have the final uh, speed let it be omega the angular speed uh, all in angular terms omega naught is the initial angular speed plus 2 remember alpha is the uh, angular acceleration and theta is the angular displacement so the analogy that we can draw is instead of v we are using omega instead of u in the linear case we are using omega naught over here instead of a we are using alpha instead of s the displacement we are using theta obviously there is no uh, analogy for time the time remains the same in this case s nth is just theta nth in this form so that's all for uh, the circular motion part uh, if you have questions, you can just mail me, uh, but uh, we'll be starting off with a new series on a new chapter and uh, the numericals that are associated with ch uh, this chapter will be in the numerical section of uh, circular motion, which will be uploaded shortly. Till then, thank you for watching.